Hello everybody, this is Ben Hansen with MinMax. EA Motive is one of those studio names that we hear about every once in a while, but probably don't think too much about. But if you look closer, they've actually been telling an interesting story over the last five years. Not the story in Battlefront 2, but a story of just how hard it is in the game industry to build up a studio and create new IP at the same time. Okay, here we go. This is gonna be fun. Let's take EA Motive, zoom in on it, look at the timeline of everything that they've hinted at, teased, revealed about their new mysterious IP. Back in 2015, the then executive VP of EA Studios, Patrick Sutherland, gave an interview with IGN, it's an interesting byline here, where he talked about the importance of building big new IP for EA. Quote, if you look at the biggest segment in our industry, which is action, we don't have a lot. EA is not known to make gigantic action games like Assassin's Creed or Batman or GTA or those types of games that are really big. The strategic direction that we put in motion is to expand our portfolio more into that segment, to see what we can bring to gamers that maybe hasn't been done before." Unquote. So, to accomplish that mission, in the summer of 2015, EA took the space that was used to develop Army of Two Devil's Cartel, that used to be called Visceral Montreal until the game shipped and then they definitely didn't call it Visceral Montreal, and started building up a team called EA Motive there, led by Jade Raymond, who was hot off the success of producing Assassin's Creed. At the time, Peter Moore gave an interview to GameSpot where he said that they're building up that new studio up in Montreal because it's where Jade Raymond wanted to live. Quote, Jade is going to help us build new IP. And also, she's also going to take control of Visceral and Redwood Shores. She has a great vision for what she believes the future of IP is. She's great at bringing the best out of development teams. She manages classic, high-quality AAA projects with big budgets and brings them in on time and on quality." Unquote. That's all true, I'm sure, but things got a little bit more complicated after 2015. The next time we saw EA Motive was at E3 2016, where EA rolled out the red carpet for their ambitious Star Wars plans in the future. We learned that EA Motive was helping to support Amy Hennig's Star Wars game down at Visceral, which was codenamed Ragtag, according to Kotaku, since Jade Raymond was also overseeing that studio after general manager Steve Papustis, who is also the bassist for the punk band No Use for a Name, left. Is this getting too complicated yet? There's a lot of names. The point is, EA signed that Star Wars deal and needed more hands on deck to ship these projects, seemingly pulling the attention away from the promise of new IP up at EA Motive. In January of 2017, there was a flash of promising news. The designer of Portal and queen of fresh ideas herself, Kim Swift, joined EA Motive as the studio design director to help shepherd this fledgling new action IP. And she left. She was lured away by Google Stadia after about two years. In May of 2017, though, EA Motive was over 100 employees, including former IGN writer Mitch Dyer. Then, after Mass Effect Andromeda... Andromeda... Bioware Montreal was absorbed into EA Motive. They were all working on the same floor in the same building anyway. Back when I was at Game Informer, I actually visited this space twice while working on cover story trips, so it's fun to see the studio and office roll over here. So EA Motive was growing fast at this point, continuing to work on the new IP and supporting Star Wars projects here and there. As reported on by DualShockers, in November of 2017, Electronic Arts' chief financial officer Blake Jorgensen said the new IP from EA Motive was probably going to be released between April 2020 and March 2021, and that it quote, looks fantastic and very exciting, with a lot of interesting gameplay I don't think anyone has ever seen before. At this point, the gameplay ideas were likely more locked down than the overall premise here. In May of 2018, there was a job posting for a lead writer at EA Motive to, quote, be a key part of defining the narrative identity for an ambitious new open world IP. And from the outside perspective at least, it looks like that position was taken up by Sachka Sandra Duvall. She's now the narrative director at EA Motive and she came from Arcane, where she worked on the Dishonored series for a long time. And if you keep studying LinkedIn, you can see that the new IP has a creative director named Mark Thompson, who comes from Ubisoft. He was a level designer on Far Cry 3, was the narrative director for Far Cry 4, and then went over to EA Motive in early 2016. And we also know at this point that the new IP is being built in the Frostbite engine, which you'd expect from EA in this era, and that engine has produced some mixed results throughout the years. 2018 saw EA Motive follow in the shaky footsteps of Bioware and Visceral before it by expanding to multiple locations with the creation of EA Motive Vancouver. Even if that studio, according to Jason Trier Kotaku at the time, was largely focused on a separate open world Star Wars game, which was later shelved. And then the founder of the studio, Jade Raymond, left for Stadia as well. So EA brought in Ubisoft's managing director, Patrick Klaus, and he told GamesIndustry.biz that EA Motive was kind of in a learning phase, trying to find its own DNA and to communicate that essence and that core of what this studio is to folks internally, to have them buy in on the vision before they reveal stuff to the outside world. Quote, It's not a massive pivot from the past. When I joined, I certainly didn't want to do a hard reset because there are plenty of things that are great. 
So we added some elements, tightened up the mission overall, tightened up our production plan. We refocused the new IP we're developing in order to make the studio become a powerhouse for years." Unquote. So the new IP is just being refocused a bit up there. Meanwhile, a big part of the studio is still on the Star Wars treadmill, with Project Maverick leaking on Europe's PSN store at the time, revealing our first look at the awesome-looking Star Wars squadrons coming out this year. It's a game that pulls on the heartstrings of fans of X-Wing and TIE Fighter out there, just like that weird free-to-play successor that was shut down right before it launched back in 2013. Does anybody else remember that weird thing? So from the outside, it looked like the studio was again putting the new IP on the back burner while they released even more Star Wars stuff. And then it happened. What's up, everybody? I'm Greg Miller, and welcome to EA Play. At Motive, we are working on a highly ambitious and innovative new game that puts the power and creativity in your hands. And it's an experience that would have been impossible without next-gen technology. So it turns out they needed the next generation of hardware to make this thing possible at all. I'm sure this thing has completely shifted over time, but what do we have now? Flying jetpackish things. Energy distribution. A grappling hook? A game where you're advised not to overclock. And it's a little ambiguous, but maybe a tease of multiplayer, or there's something going on in the background here. Okay, it's early, we shouldn't punish EA for their transparency here, but hey, there it is. I'm genuinely really looking forward to seeing more and learning more from this generation-spanning new IP, whatever it is. The natural growing pains of a large studio, working within a bureaucratic system like EA, trying to figure out what a completely new IP is and isn't, developing on an evolving engine like Frostbite, while resources are being pulled into safer Star Wars games, and leadership is shifting over is a tough, tough spot for that studio to be in. But at the same time, it lets us appreciate the few times where a new studio has pulled off new IP out of the gate. It hasn't been that common in the last 10 years, but there's stuff like Respawn and Titanfall. They were indie back at the time, so there's might be slightly less bullshit for them to deal with. Death Stranding from Kojima Productions. There's Evil Within from Tango Gameworks. Uh, let's see, Vigil Games and Darksiders? Uh, help me out. Leave a comment. Let me know what I'm missing. The takeaway is developing new IP is hard. So this week on the MinMax Show podcast, we'll be breaking down our picks for the top five best new IP of the generation. Jump into the comments and let us know your favorite, and let's celebrate these developers making it to the finish line. And EA Motive, we're rooting for you. Keep at it. If you like this video, please subscribe to MinMax's YouTube channel for even more video essays in the future. Leo Vader recently joined MinMax and is going to be creating some videos in the near future that'll be much, much funnier than this one. Thanks so much, everybody. MinMax is a Patreon about games, friends, and getting better. The deepest dive is the best, most thorough discussions about games on the internet. Prove us wrong, please. The MinMax Show podcast airs every Thursday. Patreon supporters vote on what we stream every single week and a whole lot more. Give us a shot, try subscribing to the YouTube channel, and we hope we can win you over. 